let's build a Harry Potter API with Node.js, Express, and PlanetScale. Hey everyone, my name is James Quick and I'm a staff developer advocate at PlanetScale. And I am here to lead you through this tutorial to build an API, a Harry Potter API with Node.js, Express.js and PlanetScale MySQL as a database. So as you get started, we will have a link to the GitHub repository with the final code. So you can go and grab that in the description below to grab all the files that you'll need, including the seed files, which we'll use to set up our data, data in our database. And really quickly to show you what we're gonna build, we're gonna build a git route with slash characters that will list a bunch of Harry Potter characters. We can then do a slash character slash an ID of a character. One in this case will give us Harry Potter. And then we have the same thing for wands. So we'll have uh, slash wands and then slash wand slash ID. Now this is more or less a clone of the Harry Potter API that's hosted on Heroku. I'll have a link in the description below so you can check that out as well. And actually what we're gonna do is grab the information from that API and copy it over to our planet scale database so that we can work with it and set it up inside of Node and Express. So let's go ahead and jump over to planet scale and set up our database. All right, so I am at planetscale.com. You can sign up for a free account. If you don't already have one, we'll have a link for you to sign up below. Uh, and then once you get inside of here, go ahead and create a new database. In this case, we'll call this HP API demo, and then go ahead and create that thing. Now you could also download, download the planet scale CLI and do this all from your terminal if you want, but we'll do this inside of the GUI for now. So it looks like our database has been created. Now, uh, Planet Scale works with branches in our database. So if we look in the branches tab, we'll see we have a main branch and that's what we're gonna work with. We'll actually end up creating a password specifically for this branch in a second to work with in our code. So while that's initializing, let's go ahead and look at our starter files. So I've got a couple of files in here for seeding our database. And again, if you need to download these, you can come to the GitHub repository and grab these inside of this seed folder. So now that we have our project open, we can uh, initialize this as a JavaScript project by doing npm init y. Now this will give all the defaults here and create this package.json for us. And then we'll need a couple of uh, dependencies in here. We're gonna need Axios, uh, which the seed script will use to go and grab all the information uh, from the existing Harry Potter API. So we'll do Axios. And then we'll need the Axios, then we'll need Express for our server. And then we'll need uh, .env to read environment variables locally. And lastly, we'll need the MySQL2 package. Now there is a very popular NPM MySQL, there is a very popular MySQL package uh, before MySQL2, but it hasn't been updated in a couple of years. So in this case, we're gonna use the MySQL2 package instead that has been updated more recently. And we'll have a link in the description for you to find that if you wanna find those details. Now that we have this set up, we can uh, create our app.js file. And inside of our app.js, we're basically going to create a starter express application. So we can import express from express. And notice that I'm trying to use the import syntax in here. To be able to do that, we're gonna have to open up the package.json and then do a type property and set this as module instead of common.js. This, is, this allows us to do imports uh, like we're doing here. So we'll import express from express. We'll have a few more things to import in a second. One of which we'll go ahead and do is the .env package from .env. And then uh, with that .env, what we'll do is call .env.config. This will make sure that whatever environment variables we have saved in our .env file, which we'll create in a second, are gonna be accessible to us inside of our code. All right, uh, from there, we will uh, create our app. So we'll say express like this to get our app. And then we'll say app.listen on port 3001, and we'll create a callback function and log out uh, app is listening to start this server up. Now, if we wanted to, we could run uh, inside of our package.json, inside of our scripts, we could run a dev command and our dev command could be node app.js to go ahead and run this app. Now I'm gonna take this one step further and use a package called nodemon. This is installed globally on my machine, but you can install this locally as well. So we can install nodemon 
And what NodeMon will allow us to do is start our application and have it live reload every time we save our files, which is really convenient while we're testing this out. All right, so uh, with this command, now we should be able to run npm run dev in our terminal, and this will say that our application is running and listening uh, for us, but we don't have an endpoint created yet. So let's go ahead and create a uh, get endpoint. That's just a test. So we'll just do this as slash, and then our callback will take a request and a response, and we'll just respond back with res.json, and we'll say a message is hello world. That way we can just test this out. So let's open up our local host 3000. And instead of doing slash wands, we'll just go to the root. Oh, and actually I ran this at port 3001. So now you can see that this object is coming back. All right, cool. So we have the ability to set up an express application. We have the ability to set up a dummy endpoint. Now let's go ahead and check on our database and create a credential specifically for this branch. So this is our main branch of our database. And we wanna now create a credential, a private password that we can use to connect to this so that we can not only create our tables, but populate it with test data. So we'll go to connect and then uh, we don't have a password yet. So we'll go ahead and generate a new password. And then conveniently in here, we have a Node.js MySQL option where we can go and copy this code. Now you could copy this code directly into your code. What we actually wanna do is create a .env file and we'll create a database URL property and then I'm gonna come down here and paste this in. So this is giving you the starter code if you were creating the connection yourself, but really all we need is this connection string. So I can copy this and put this in as my database URL. Go ahead and get rid of the rest of this. And now if we look inside of that seed file that we created, our seed file is using that uh, process.env, that environment variable database URL to create its connection. We'll do this from scratch in a second. And it's gonna go ahead and populate our uh, tables and our data. So let's stop our application. I'm doing that with control C on here. And then I'm gonna go back into the package.json and I'll give a seed command. And the seed command will call node of seed slash seed JS. So it should just run that seed file. So if we have everything set up correctly, we should be able to run npm run seed. And hopefully it'll give us some helpful log messages here that it dropped the existing tables, it created the wand table and the character table, and then it saved the wands and then the characters uh, into the database. If we look inside of that SQL file that we copied, you can see all the SQL that it ran for dropping the existing tables if they exist, for inserting uh, the new tables or creating the new tables and then inserting the new records. And you can see the different properties that are associated with each table for characters, full name, species, gender, and so on and so on. And then for wand, it's uh, wood, core, wand length, and character ID. So this is associated a character with a wand and a wand with a character. So let's scroll over to Planet Scale. We can actually go into the console now and actually run some commands right here. So we can run a show tables command, make sure to add a semicolon on the end. So we've got two tables. We can describe these tables. So HP character table. It'll show us what the different properties are that are in there. Okay, that looks familiar. And then we can describe the wand table as well. So describe wand. All right. And then uh, let's say we want to select star from HP character and then limit this to 10 records. So we should grab the first 10 records out of our HP character. We see that that information got populated. There's Harry and Hermione and Ron and so on and so on. And then we could do the exact same thing, but in our wand table to show the wands that come out as well. All right, so all of that data has been populated. Now we can go back into our app.js and update these endpoints to go and grab that data appropriately. So let's uh, close out the seed script and now let's run uh, npm run dev again, and we'll start to create these commands or these endpoints that will be able to query our data. So the first thing we'll want to do is actually create the connection with uh, the MySQL2 package. So we'll import MySQL from MySQL2, and then we'll create that connection. So we'll say connection equals await, and we'll do MySQL.create connection, and we'll pass in, just like we saw a second ago, process.env.database URL. So this is gonna go and look inside of that .env file and grab that database URL property so that we can create our connection. Now that we have our connection, let's go ahead and define our first endpoint. It's app.get, and we wanna do the uh, slash characters endpoint. 
And this will take in um, a callback function that will be uh, asynchronous. So we'll use async await and it will take a request and a response. And we'll go and move this on the same line. And now inside of here, we want to create a query. So we'll create a raw SQL query and we'll say we want to select star from H P underscore character. That's the name of our table. And then we'll go ahead and actually query that data using our connection. So we'll say uh, the response uh, is going to be await connection dot query, and then we'll pass in this query. Now from that response, we get back inside of it an array. And the first thing in the array is the rows of data. So we can actually just destructure that using our destructure syntax and grab the rows. And then we can say res dot send of rows. So that'll be the data that actually comes back that we'll send back as JSON. <coughs> So if we save this, Nodemon uh, should go ahead and refresh our server and we come to uh, our endpoint, the hello world still works. And then if we do slash characters, we should, should be able to see data. But one of the things that we needed to do now to use this async await syntax is instead of importing from MySQL 2, we wanna import from the promisified version of that. So we're gonna do slash promise. So a little uh, configuration there. Let's go ahead and refresh this. And we should now see that we actually get all of our data back and we can see this inside of the browser in our JSON response. All right, so that works out pretty well. Uh, let's go back and create the next endpoint, which is going to be to get a specific character. So app.get slash characters. And then we can do uh, route parameters by doing uh, colon and then the name of that parameter. We'll see how to access that in a second. So similar setup here, except we have that route parameter. And then we want to actually get a reference to that route parameter. And we can get that uh, by saying uh, const params, params equals rec dot params. Uh, but it's going to have a property of ID. So we can destructure that ID right there. All right. So we take in that ID and then we can uh, do like we just did before. We can say we can create our query and we can say select uh, star from HP character where ID equals, and then uh, we could pass in our ID. Now we could, we won't want to do this, but we could go ahead and do ES6 template literal strings and pass in that ID here. But we don't wanna do that because that will allow us to be subject to SQL injection attacks. So instead of that, we can just add our placeholder dot here. And uh, that should be enough. We may need to lowercase this ID and we can specify this is the HP character dot ID. All right, so we're using our placeholder here, uh, which is going to help us prevent SQL injection attacks. We'll have a video that will talk about SQL injection attacks and how to prevent them in Node.js and Express using this package coming up soon on the YouTube channel. So make sure to subscribe if you wanna check that out. And if you have any extra questions that you wanna see covered, leave those in the comments below. All right, so we have our query and now we do the same thing that we did before where we're gonna grab the rows and uh, then we will do await connection dot query of that query. All right, so then we should uh, get back the rows. We may not actually get back a row though. So we can do a little check here to say if the rows of zero is falsy. So if it's null or undefined or something like that, we could return back a message that says res.json res and we could say a message of couldn't find that character. All right, so let's see if that will work. Now, it looks like we've got uh, an issue here. Oh, it looks like this should be rec instead of res. And the last thing we wanna do is actually uh, send back that JSON of rows of zero. So either we will return an error message or a message that says couldn't find this, or we'll return that actual item. So let's save this, it should refresh. Now we can come to characters and do slash one and hopefully we'll get back Harry Potter information, but it looks like we messed something up here. Oh, the thing we didn't do is actually pass in this placeholder. So in addition to passing the actual query, we need to pass an array of these placeholders that are inside of it. And so in the array, there's only one placeholder, which is the ID that we're looking for that we grabbed from these params. So we're asking the user to tell us which ID, then we wanna use that uh, in combination with our placeholder. So now let's refresh, we should see Harry Potter. If we do two, <coughs> we see Hermione and that should work for all the characters, including 
if we uh, type in 1000, which is way too many, we can uh, respond back with that message that says this isn't a character. And then uh, we'll probably be able to generate an error here if we type in something that is not a number. Uh, so we are able to uh, handle that gracefully by just checking to make sure if there's no data that's returned, then we uh, can log out this message that says that we couldn't find this character. Now, again, we are using these placeholders to make sure that we're not allowing the user to generate SQL that can uh, make us success, susceptible to SQL injection attacks. More on that to come in a future video. All right, so that's our characters and our uh, characters by ID. Let's actually copy these two things and we'll do almost the exact same thing for the wand. So I'm gonna copy those two endpoints. We will just update this to uh, wands and then we'll select from the want table the rest of it should stay the same. We'll do the same thing down here to change that to wands, change this table to wand, and then the table to wand over here as well. And we can say, couldn't find that wand. All right, so if we go to slash uh, wands in this case, we should see all of our wands, and then we can do a slash one to get the Holly Phoenix feather uh, wand, which is associated with the character ID of one. So all that stuff works out really well. Now, the last thing you might be wondering is what happens if any of this fails? Well, when we use the async await syntax, we typically will want to surround this with a try catch to make sure we handle any errors. So we'd put all of this in a try and then we would do a catch here to catch the error. And then we might uh, error this out to the console so we can uh, error that error. And then if we wanted to be a little more sophisticated, uh, we could attach to each response, we could attach a data property and then a, a specific status. We don't need to update that too much, uh, but we can update the status uh, message if appropriate and then the actual data. So what I like to do is create a default uh, status of 200 up here, then create a return val object, uh, and then we'll add on a uh, message and or data to this return val and then send that. So we can, uh, we can take our rows and we can say that our return val.data is going to be our rows. And then we can uh, return our uh, JSON. We can res.json our return val. Now, if we have an error, then we uh, might wanna do a similar thing, but we'll want to update the status. So we can say status equals uh, 500 to just say something went wrong. And then we can say that the return val.message equals something went wrong. And then lastly, we will do res.status of status, and then uh, JSON of return val. Uh, you might notice that we're repeating a little bit uh, the res.json and potentially the res.status. We could update this to return the status as well since it defaults to 200. We can also optimize this a bit to do a finally here and inside of the finally, go ahead and uh, update this with the status and the return val. So in the success case, we just update the data. In the error case, we update the status and the message and then return that appropriately. So if we uh, now refresh and go back to our characters endpoint, you can see that we should get all of our uh, information and it's coming back as a data property of that return val. If we were to make this uh, query fail, for example, by adding in extra characters for a table that doesn't exist, we should now see that we get back an error message. We could update this to be error to say that something went wrong. So this allows us to keep some consistency inside of these APIs where each one is gonna have a message if apl uh, applicable, a data property, which is what they're probably actually looking for, and then an appropriate status. Now, one version of this appropriate status is we could update this one below to say if that character couldn't be found, we could update that status to be a 401. Now, these are all updated and finalized in the final code, so you can go and check that out. But that's the basics of how we would create an API with Node Express, the MySQL 2 package, using PlanetScale as our database. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any other questions about uh, PlanetScale or working with databases in Node and Express, let us know in the comments below. Keep an eye out for the video coming out about SQL injection attacks and how to prevent them. In the meantime, we'll catch you in the next one.